Intel's Arc B5 80s performance leaked. First, let's talk about Intel's latest move in the GPU market, the Arc B580. Leaked teardown pictures reveal almost everything about the card, including a design that's eerily reminiscent of NVIDIA's Founders Edition GPUs. With a $249 price tag, the B580 aims to compete with mid-tier graphics cards like NVIDIA's RTX 4060. But here's the kicker. Early rumors suggest its performance doesn't surpass the RTX 4060 Ti. And with NVIDIA's RTX 50 series launch just around the corner, Intel's timing might be off. Gamers are unlikely to wait for Intel's driver updates or the widespread adoption of their XCSS tech when better options could be on the horizon. Intel is banking on aggressive pricing, but with the RTX 4060 potentially being phased out soon, Intel's success might depend on offering a clear value proposition. Will the ARC B580's competitive pricing and flashy design be enough to sway budget-conscious buyers? Stay tuned for reviews once it officially launches next week. AMD won't give chance to Intel's GPU. AMD is making waves with its upcoming RDNA 4 GPUs. As new details emerge about the Radeon RX 8600 and RX 8800 through ROCM code updates, these GPUs are targeting the mid-range market, with the RX 8800 XT promising 45% faster ray tracing than the RX 7900 XTX and significantly lower power consumption. AMD has doubled down on its sweet spot strategy, openly stepping away from the high-end GPU arms race with NVIDIA. Now, here's the big question. Can Intel's newly teased ARC B580 really compete here? AMD's aggressive mid-range push seems tailor-made to attract budget-conscious gamers who prioritize price to performance, making it even tougher for Intel to carve out space in this crowded market. And honestly, isn't this what gamers want? Affordable GPUs with solid performance, not a speculative bet on improving hardware. With AMD focusing on delivering where it counts, Intel's upple battle just got a lot steeper. Windows 11 still no U-turn on TPM 2.0 requirement. Microsoft is standing firm on its hardware requirements for Windows 11, with TPM 2.0 declared non-negotiable by the company. Senior product manager Stephen Hosking emphasized that TPM ensures a secure, future-proof OS. But here's the twist. Windows Server 2025 doesn't have the same strict requirement. So, why can enterprises opt out, but regular users can't? This rigid stance might be backfiring. Windows 11's adoption rate is significantly slower compared to Windows 10 at the same stage. Meanwhile, savvy users are finding creative workarounds. Using tools like Rufus and Ventoe to bypass TPM checks, or even extending Windows 10 update support via new hacks for $30 a year. For Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, the dilemma is clear. Is maintaining the Windows ecosystem's user base more important than selling Windows 11 licenses? Resistance from legacy device users suggests that many still see Windows 11 as lacking both innovation and stability. It might be time for Microsoft to rethink its priorities before these users jump ship or dig in deeper with Windows 10. Amazon need Doge. Amazon, the tech giant we all know and many rely on, is facing a lawsuit that raises serious questions about its commitment to fairness. The DC Attorney General alleges that Amazon slowed prime deliveries in low-income neighborhoods east of the Anacostia River, without telling subscribers. Instead of its usual in-house drivers, Amazon outsourced these deliveries to slower third-party services like USPS. Amazon says the decision was about driver safety, citing targeted incidents in those areas. But here's the rub. Prime members in these neighborhoods still paid full price while receiving subpar service. And when they complained, Amazon reportedly misled them, claiming delays were coincidental. This brings us to the bigger issue. Amazon, a tech-first company with access to cutting-edge AI and cloud capabilities, chose to cut costs by reducing efficiency instead of innovating to improve processes. For customers hoping to get their holiday gifts on time, this feels like a misstep. Maybe Elon Musk's satirical doge. Government overhaul projects should target Amazon next. After all, bloated systems aren't exclusive to public institutions. Who will be Intel's next CEO? Intel's search for a new CEO has led to speculation around Lip Bhutan, 
a tech investor with a stellar track record but a contentious past at Intel. If chosen, he faces a daunting to-do list, compounded by structural challenges unique to Intel. Firstly, while AMD and NVIDIA thrive on high R&D investments and lighter manufacturing commitments, Intel can't afford to follow that playbook. The company recently secured $7.86 billion under the U.S. Chips and Science Act, which ties its fate to domestic manufacturing expansion. This limits Intel's flexibility to innovate purely through design breakthroughs or global outsourcing, a proven route for competitors. The required massive investment in U.S.-based fabs strains its resources while global rivals like TSMC and Samsung extend their lead in cutting-edge processes and capacity. Secondly, Intel's ambitions in the AI and enterprise GPU space are overshadowed by NVIDIA, AMD, and even Broadcom. Despite AI's enterprise appeal, Intel has yet to carve out significant market share. And in consumer markets, the buzz around AIGC hardware hasn't translated into a compelling reason for PC upgrades. This double bind, lagging in enterprise relevance and consumer enthusiasm, makes growth prospects murky. Another challenge is the exodus of top talent. Over the past few years, key Intel engineers have defected to AMD, NVIDIA, or startups, leaving Intel struggling to rebuild its once dominant R&D engine. Can Lip Bhutan attract, retain, and inspire the kind of innovative minds Intel desperately needs? But here's a potential game changer. Tan's deep connections in venture capital, particularly in emerging chip technologies. Instead of trying to outpace TSMC and NVIDIA across the board, Intel could focus on strategic acquisitions of promising chip startups, leveraging them to gain footholds in niche but high-growth sectors like quantum computing, edge AI, or RISC-V. This strategy aligns with TAN's expertise and could be the quickest path to differentiation in a cutthroat market. In summary, Intel's next CEO will need to navigate manufacturing constraints, fierce competition, and a demoralized talent pool. Liputan's background in innovation and venture capital could inject fresh momentum, but without bold decisions, like targeted acquisitions in emerging areas. Intel risks continuing its slide from the pinnacle of the semiconductor world. The stakes couldn't be higher, but the opportunities, if seized, could redefine its future.